Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the X Duo X2S, which is, as you can see, a very, very tiny device. So, I guess I don't know if this backstory is worth talking about, but many, many moons ago, I bought a Sans Eclipse, very small MP3 player, and kind of unbeknownst to myself when I bought it, it ended up being a little bit of a cult classic. A really good sounding MP3 player in a very, very compact package. And ever since then, I've kind of wanted something new like that. I, you know, it's got a simple UI, it doesn't have a lot of features, but that's fine. It's small and it's cute. And so that brings me to this, which is the X-Duo X2S. This is X-Duo's latest digital audio player, or an MP3 player for the lay people out there. And it's pretty small and it's also pretty cheap. This thing costs around 60 bucks, which in, in digital audio player terms is, is a pretty low price. And, so I've been living with this thing for the past week or so and listening to it and comparing it to Sans Eclipse as well as some of my other digital audio players and trying to figure out, is this a good modern take on the Sans Eclipse? I'll tell you right now, it's got pretty decent power. It's got the size and it's got the simple UI, but is that enough? That's what we're gonna talk about in this review. So like all my other reviews, this is a live stream. If you're watching now live and you have any questions about the X2S, Drop them in the live chat, and at the end of the review, we'll spend some time talking back and forth. And if you're watching the VOD now, you missed out on the live stream, that's totally fine. But subscribe to the channel and ding the YouTube bell so that YouTube will let you know next time I'm live. And then we can talk. But for now, let's dive into the X-Duo X2S. And oh, look at that. That's a beautiful spin. That's an amazing spin um, for a very amazingly small digital audio player. Anyway. All right, so we'll start with talking about what's inside the box of the X-Duo X2S, and I'll just be upfront, there's not a ton in this box. There's some paperwork in there. I'm not gonna bore you with the paperwork. You get the X2S itself, the unit, and then you get a USB charging cable, which I'll zoom in here so you can take a look. It's got USB-A on one side and USB-C on the other. And that is as much as you get for 60 bucks, which I don't know, I'm not mad at that. I think that's a perfectly fine set for 60 bucks and then you get the player itself which we'll do kind of like a, an overview of the hardware this thing does seem to be all made out of metal uh, at least here around the sides like this frame is metal this front plate appears to be metal and this back plate yeah this might be plastic i'm not sure about that but generally like it feels pretty good and it's got a decent weight in the hand you can't really tell here as i'm doing this but it's got a decent weight in the hand and, and, a, and generally i think a pretty decent build uh, the buttons the inputs are pretty simple as you might expect on a small player like this over here on the side you do have dedicated volume up and down buttons which i appreciate and then on the front you've got track backwards track forward you've got a play pause button and you've got a kind of like all-purpose home menu button over here on the other side, you've got a micro SD port, and this does support up to, I believe, 128 gigs of uh, micro SD space, which is exactly what I've got in there. I guess there's a reset button. I never had to press that. Uh, nothing here on the back to, to look at, but along here on the top, there is the power on off button. And this also has does double duty of turning the screen on and off. And I actually really quite like that placement. And then you also have the USB-C charging port up top, which again, I also really like that placement because it means that you can, this is a thing I think more dApps should do. Um, I like having the headphone port on the bottom, which we do have here. It's a 3.5 millimeter single-ended headphone port, but, but I like having that on the bottom of a dApp and then you could say like, leave this on a table and maybe even be charging it with the cable, the charging cable running away from you. And you have like a pretty, Nice, tidy desktop package. Uh, obviously pretty small for desktop use, but if you're in an office space or something like that, it could make sense. So I actually really quite like the layout of this device. Given what they're working with, like they, they did a pretty good job. My only real kind of small complaints about the, the hardware build is that the volume up and down buttons are a little bit on the rattly side. Um, I'll give it a shake and hold my microphone close to it and maybe you'll hear it, but... I don't know, can you hear that? Um, it's a small complaint, but uh, worth calling out is that as I'm moving this thing around, I can kind of hear those buttons moving around. And I do wish that there was a little bit of uh, damping or something in there to hold those more firmly. The rest of the buttons all feel pretty good and they actually have a pretty, pretty decent click action on them. 
So that's the hardware. Anything else I wanted to talk about? I mean, we can talk about the screen, which here, that's what the screen looks like on this thing. Obviously, we're not talking about a high resolution Android display. There's no IPS in here. I'm guessing this is like some sort of, you know, old school OLED. And in fact, I'll pull in my old Sansa clip. Let's see if I can turn this thing on. All right, here's my old Sansa clip for reference. This one is an OLED screen. I remember that, I forget. I don't know exactly what kind of screen this is, but you can see that they're pretty comparable. Um, there might be brightness settings on this and I don't have it very high. Obviously you can see that the, the clip's brightness here is a little bit higher. Let me actually dive into that and see if there is uh, a brightness setting. So I don't wanna, yeah, there is a brightness setting and I have this at like 50% brightness. So uh, it could get brighter if you wanted it to. But generally, you know, I, the screen is what it is. Uh, if I had any complaints about the screen itself, it's m much less so about um, the color depth of it, obviously, right? It supports yellow and blue. Uh, and, and it's not really so much about the resolution. I just wish that, and maybe this is us getting a little bit more into the functionality. I wish that the, the font that they chose was a little bit smaller because as you can see, there's just really not a lot of room for song titles and album titles and artist titles and stuff on here. I feel like going with a smaller font, which the clip does, right? The clip has um, basically the same sort of issues, but you can see that they fit quite a bit more text on an even smaller screen by just going with a smaller font. So I do prefer that. All right, let's, let's dive a little bit more into the functionality here of the X2S. And Again, I'm, this is gonna be really simple. This is not a complicated device. There's no Bluetooth, there's no Wi-Fi, which are totally fine by me. I'm not a big Bluetooth user for when it comes to music. Um, but if you're looking for a Bluetooth device, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. I'll give you a quick tour of the operating system itself, which is pretty simple. And you kind of saw a little bit of it as I was showing off the screen. Let me back out to the home screen. So this is what the home screen looks like. And you can toggle around to a handful of different settings. There's no labels or anything on them, but they're not complicated, right? This is your EQ settings, uh, and you've got a couple of options for um, preset EQs, as well as a custom EQ with, I believe, six bands. Let's see, yeah, six, six bands. So not a ton of customizability, but that's actually not bad for such a small, simple player like this. Uh, you get folder browsing, so you can browse the music on your memory card just by the folder organization. Uh, or if I back out, and that's what this button is doing, it uh, looks like there's also a favorites, there are like playlists. I didn't actually use this at all. Um, but then if I also go to this menu, this is basically browsing your music by its ID3 tag. So you can browse by uh, all songs, artists, and albums, your pretty typical stuff, genres. Um, and then there you get your alphabetical list of artists based on the ID3 tags in your music, which is pretty typical. And you might've noticed one thing there that I, I guess I, I think I like this, I guess, because there's no, the UI really only has like select and backward. Um, so if I wanna get back to a thing that I was at before, like the now playing screen, uh, I could either navigate all the way back through those menus and hopefully I get to the right place, or you can go back out to the top level menu and hitting back once again takes you to the now playing screen. So basically if I just hammer this back button, I will essentially loop through the UI. I don't think it's like the most elegant solution, but for a simple UI like this, I, I think it's actually perfectly, perfectly adequate, honestly. Um, anything else I wanted to talk about here? I mean, I can show you what settings come on the X2S. Um, looks like you can set your, let me go to the top. So you can change your language, of course, create playlists. I didn't play around with this at all, but it's actually kind of cool that you can, there's some sort of playlist functionality, even like my Sony Walkmans, which have Android and much more complicated UIs, uh, don't have playlist building on them, which is odd, but there you go. Uh, you set your repeat function, right? Do you want it to repeat all songs? Just repeat a folder, uh, report, you know, the typical stuff. And I think you can also access that from the now playing screen. There's the screen brightness, which we talked about. Default volume, uh, which can either remember what your last vo volume setting, or you can reset it to um, always go down to, let's say like a low volume if you wanted to save your ears. Uh, and then the lock screen setting, we'll dive into that one a little bit more in detail later. Sleep timer, off timer, these are pretty typical things. Backlight timer, information. Um, and then I'll just pull this up for posterity. This is the software version that I'm running. 
1.2b. Uh, yeah, so not a ton of options there, but you know, for again, such a simple little player. I think the UI on this is actually not bad. Again, my biggest complaint about the UI is just, I wish the font was smaller. Here on the now playing screen, I think the font actually looks pretty good, um, especially the numbers down here. Like that's about the right size. It's just when you're browsing music here, um, the, uh, the, you just don't see a lot, right? Especially when you have track numbers and other stuff in the beginning. Like I see the first four letters of my song titles. Not quite enough. I think that is the thing that they could address with firmware. It seems like a software sort of thing, but uh, TBD on whether or not XDuo would actually do that. Okay, um, what are some other things that are I think are worth calling out? Maybe some some other you know I, I'll call them small complaints, but I think they're real complaints. Um, so issue number one. Uh, or thing that I wish that they had, number one. And this is, a, I think, a pretty small issue because this is a pretty common. But if I go to, let's say, an artist view, uh, and let's say, all right, Alice in Chains. I've got one, two, three, four, four different albums by Alice in Chains. I wish there was a view that was all songs by Alice in Chains. And this is, again, a common omission in these digital audio players, but I'm gonna bring it up every time because it's a thing I like. I wanna listen to all Alice in Chains music and I don't think that there's really an easy way to do that unless I made a playlist with Alice in Chains music. Um, and then uh, another, I'll, call, I'll, I'll chalk this one up as kind of a small complaint, is there's no gapless playback on this. So when you're listening to music and you're listening to an album, if the songs on the album are just kind of like blend and flow into each other, it's not gonna come across smoothly here on the X2S. Uh, there's a good, healthy, I would say solid one second gap in between songs. And again, maybe that's a thing that they could address with the firmware update, but there's no option for it that we just saw. So I don't know, you gotta take it as it is. Now, those are kind of my, my, my small complaints here with the UI on the X2S. If it was just those, I think I could probably recommend this, right? 60 bucks for a little, a little audio player. But there's a couple of other, I'm gonna call these big, basically deal breaker issues, at least for me. Um, I'll describe them and you make up your mind on whether or not these are deal breakers for you. Um, but yeah, so kind of deal breaker number one is how long this thing takes to, um, to, to form a music library. So I put my micro SD card in here, which has got about 4,000 songs on it. So it's a fairly good size, but there's also people that have way bigger music libraries than me. And with 4,000 songs in there, how long would you guess it should take this player to build the library and like read all his ID3 tags? Because I'll show you how long it took. I timed it. Uh, this is me timing it with my phone. It took over 10 minutes, literally over 10 minutes to build the music library uh, when I put my memory card in here. And the real kicker is, well, two, two real kickers. One, there's no option to not scan your music library. As soon as you put the SD card in there, it will automatically scan the music library. And then kicker number two is that even if you don't change anything about the music, it's still gonna rescan it. So that is, ugh, that's really pretty annoying. And frankly, like it makes me afraid to want to change music on this thing or on the, the micro SD card, because I know I'm gonna have to sit through another 10 minutes of building that library. Is that a deal breaker? Eh, kind of is, but I don't know. I guess I could live with that. But there are some other things that I think are, are maybe maybe bigger issues. So uh, let's see. Issue, the other issue I wanted to bring out is that the, let's see, how do I get into this? Let's go back to the top level menu and we'll navigate by the ID3 tags, right? So I will go to artists, let's say, um, let's do Tupac. All Eyes on Me album. And a thing maybe note standing out to you uh, if you know this album, but if you don't know this album, maybe it won't stand out to you. And what's what the problem that I'm bringing up here is that the order of songs is alphabetical and not by track title or not by uh, disc order. So you can see the first track is Two of America's Most Wanted because it starts with a number and then it's ain't hard and all about it or all about you all eyes on me you can see it's this is an alphabetical order which is not the order that the songs appear on the album 
And that is really kind of a deal. Like I just can't listen to albums on this thing uh, in order if I browse by the ID3 tags. Now, because my music library is all organized um, pretty, pretty nicely in its folders, I can actually, let's see if I go back to that, um, that Tupac album. And you can see maybe here's another small problem is that scrolling this can take a while, but that's what I get for having such a large library on a small device. But let's say if I go back into that same album and this is now browsing just by file names. Now the order is, now the files are basically ordered by file name. And because my file names all start with a track number, I can, with this method, listen to them in order. This has got this, I think this album had two CDs. So that's why you've got two sevens and two eights, etc. So that's my workaround. But then like, if that's my workaround, why am I sitting through 10 minutes of building the music library uh, via the ID3 tags if the ID3 tags just aren't even useful for me? And then another thing, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find an example of this, but there are some albums that still appear not in alphabetical order, like the track titles are not in alphabetical order. And I haven't figured out that pattern. But basically that just means that there are certain albums on this device I can't listen to in the original order. And I would consider that, I would consider that a deal breaker for me personally. And then this last point, this one's more just a really annoying why. Maybe it's not a deal breaker, but kind of it is. All right, so I think the main reason to have a digital audio player for me, it's not necessarily about the sound quality. Uh, because a phone with a dongle can sound pretty good, but it's about having access to these buttons and always being able to toggle pause play without having to look at the device. Now this device, if I go, I, I, I said we would get back to it. If I go back into the settings, let's see, what is the device name? It is called lock screen setting. And basically what this setting does is it lets you enable or disable certain buttons when you're, when the thing is turned off, when the screen is turned off like this. And for me, when I have the screen turned off, I still wanna be able to access everything. Like I know why that's an option, why some people might want to be able to throw this in a pocket and not worry about accidentally pressing buttons. For me, I prefer to have the, the convenience of being able to access the buttons at all times. So with that setting, I will always turn it to, um, oh my gosh, I'm navigating too many times. Let me show you real quick what I do. The setting that I always go is I do none key and none key just means it doesn't lock any of the keys. Now, a problem with this is that every time this device shuts off, it forgets that preference. So ugh, I just have, I have to either remember to always go back into that setting and, and turn it back on or never turn the device off. But if I don't let this device turn itself off after times, it will drain its battery dead. So I gotta, I gotta have that setting on, which just means that um, I've basically gotten used to, uh, if I need to hit the buttons on this, just got used to the, the ha being in the habit of turning on the screen first. Kind of annoying, but I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, again, I think that's the sort of thing that they could solve with firmware if they want to. So now I haven't even talked at this point about how this thing sounds and I'll be upfront like most of my DAP reviews, I don't dive too much into detail about the sound and that's just because most digital audio players, most digital audio sources to my ear sound basically the same. I mean, if I listen really closely, I can start to pick out maybe this thing sounds a little bit different this way and that way, but most things they're either like obviously they don't sound very good or they sound competent they sound as good as i expect them to and that's generally good enough for me and i would say that the x2s falls into that latter category i think this is a very good sounding digital audio player um, that doesn't mean there aren't some problems but i think generally it sounds nice and clean uh, and it has plenty of power too which you might not expect out of a small little player like this but it is rated for 250 milliwatts of power at 32 ohms, which is actually more power than my Walkmans, uh, which are larger players. And frankly, like it's enough power to drive anything that I own, including like my 300 ohm Sennheiser HD 600s. Uh, let's see, I'll go back to the table just because I have my notes here. Um, but the, the, the max volume setting, let's see if we can bring it up. Yeah, you can, nope, that's the wrong screen. Uh, up here, you have the max, the volume setting, right? So that's at 24, 23. Um, this volume goes up to, I believe, 31. 
And when I'm listening to my Sennheiser HD 600s, I would say like between volume 15 and 20 is loud enough. Like volume level 20 is pretty loud. Uh, and volume level 15 in a quiet room is plenty of volume for me. So you can see there is plenty of headroom still in there. Uh, and then when listening to, you know, more sensitive IEMs, of course, you've got even more range, more headroom with this on like the Blessing 2, the Moondrop Blessing 2, which is not an especially sensitive IEM, um, but on that, like at volume level of eight, it was more than loud enough. So sound quality is generally pretty good. Volume output, I think is pretty, not, not just like good enough, but frankly, pretty phenomenal for a little player this size. But, and this is, this is mostly a but if you're listening with IMs, uh, there is pretty significant audible noise floor on this thing that gets picked up by even IMs that aren't that sensitive. So I mentioned the Blessing 2 as an example. Not a very sensitive IM. I would say it's like average sensitivity. It's not overly sensitive at all, but on this player, just plugging it in directly or immediately, even with no music playing, I can very clearly pick up an audible noise floor to it, which is, can be a little bit annoying, but once music starts playing, I guess it kind of goes into the background. Um, I could ignore that, but it's loud enough that it, it does annoy me a little bit. If you wanted to, you could use something like this, which is the iFi IE Match. Um, this is like a $35 maybe dongle that you can plug into pretty much any source and it will um, basically solve any issues with hiss. And it actually works really quite well here with the X-Duo X2S. Uh, even when li listening with more sensitive IEMs, I've, this thing really just cut out the hiss entirely. Uh, and that was even on just the, the high setting. There's an ultra high setting as well. But anyway, this is a decent addition to a product like this if there is a hiss that you need to solve. And on the X2S, unfortunately, there is a hiss that needs to be solved. Another small complaint when it comes to IMs, and I don't know, maybe this isn't a small complaint. Maybe this is a pretty serious complaint, but I mentioned that at volume level eight, this thing is like loud and more than loud enough for me on the Moondrop Blessing 2, which means I don't have a lot of range for adjustment, right? I've got level eight is like as loud as I would ever want to listen to. And then between one and eight, like those are how many settings I get. And if you want to really be fine tuned with your volume control, it's hard to be fine tuned with this on an IEM. I really do actually think that this could stand to have a low gain mode and there's no like high gain, low, low gain setting in here. Maybe that's a thing that, that X-Duo could do with a firmware update, but I think something like that could really help in terms of like giving you, you know, instead of being from volume level zero to eight on the Blessing 2, maybe it goes from zero to 20 and you have just a lot more range to be more fine tuned with your volume control. But I think, let me go back to my notes real quick. I don't know. I think that's about as much as I wanted to talk about the X-Duo X2S. Out of five stars, this probably won't be too surprising. Unfortunately, I'm going to give it just two stars. Um, there are some things to like about this little player, but I just, I can't recommend it given some of those deal breakers that I mentioned. The really, really long ID3 tags. The fact that I can't listen to albums in order is really just kind of like a, huh? And that it forgets my settings every time it turns itself off. I find really pretty annoying and pretty disappointing because otherwise, again, the hardware here is pretty solid. The sound is pretty solid, especially if you're listening to headphones. And maybe these are some things that they can solve with the firmware update, but I wouldn't hold my breath. That said, if you're interested in checking out the X-Duo X2S, of course, I've got a link in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and then ding the YouTube bell so that YouTube will let you know next time I'm live. And then I'll see you on the next super review after I talk to the folks that are in the live chat. Have a good week. All right, live chat, how's it going? It's a little bit later for me than it has been. Let's see if we have any uh, different different folks here. Big Boss, how's it going? A, DNT Arc, of course. How you doing, bud? Transient Snail, how's it going? Earned Crab, whoa, I'm actually early. early. Welcome, welcome to being early. Audio Fool, how's it going? Leonardo Tov, doing all right. Whew.
Ishan asking me about the Blonde Mini. Um, I haven't heard the Blonde Mini. It looks interesting. It looks a little macaroni noodle-ish, uh, but I haven't heard it. I mean, I will say that like the original Blonde BL03, which I guess is probably not the original because it's got 03 in the name, the Blonde that made their name, I think it's a pretty impressive little $30 IM. I don't listen to it a lot myself because it's bassier than I like. And I would expect the Blonde Mini is probably also bassier than I like. But it, I don't know, again, the, the O3 is a pretty impressive IM for what it is. Um, I'm interested to try out the Mini, but I haven't heard it yet. Garth McHill saying for 60 bucks, the spin alone sells it. If you want another spin, let's do it. Let's see if I can make a mess. Look at that spin. Maybe also worth calling out or just pulling out some other things for size comparisons. If you're curious, um, so here, obviously the Sansa clip, this is a Cutelix Q5 or look, sorry, Cutelix 5K. And it's interesting to look at this thing compared to the X-Duo. It's like, this is basically the size of a Bluetooth dongle, but it's all self-contained, which is pretty cool. And then obviously the, the clip was small, but you could also go with something like this, which is probably, this is probably the smallest player that I have that doesn't have like a really compromised UI. I mean, it's not the best UI, but it's got a touch screen and, and, and generally all of the, the functionalities and buttons and stuff that you would want. So I don't know. I, I you know, I, I do quite like how small this thing is. It's a bummer about the other stuff. Uh, Big Boss saying was genuinely worried that the USB-C was actually going to be micro USB. And yeah, that's, so this is the X2S. I believe X-Duo has the X2 before this, which is micro USB. And it's, it's actually kind of nice. And finally in 2021, it is actually the exception when a, when a thing is not USB-C. Whereas it felt like for five years or so, YouTubers would just unbox a thing and like, wow, it's not USB-C. I wanted it to be USB-C. For like five years, people pretended like USB-C was a standard and it wasn't, but now it is. Kenneth Mark, how's it going? Nice to see you. Welcome to the live chat. DNTR saying I might cop one. Checks mostly what I'm looking for in Adapt. So now this is, I'm really interested in your feedback given what you've seen in the review. Um, and I, I assume most people going into a $60 digital audio player are gonna be expecting some level of compromise. Are the things that were deal breakers for me, do they seem like they're gonna be deal breakers for you? Or are you still interested in it? My Life Matters saying this device's biggest competition is any device that supports Rockbox. Maybe in like the super enthusiast quarters, and I guess the X Duo X, anything from X Duo is probably basically just targeted at enthusiasts, but I, I don't know how many people are using Rockbox, if I'm perfectly honest. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people using Rockbox, but the people that are shopping for these things on Amazon, I don't think they're looking at Rockbox. Abilash, nice to see you as well. Good to see you again. Uh, and you're asking a question, do we need amps for IMs? And the answer to that question is, I'm gonna make it complicated because I can and, and I'm pedantic, but I mean, the short answer is no, but the long answer is yeah, you do. Um, which is to say that basically any, out, any audio output, like even an Apple dongle, right? that has a built-in amplification in it. So yes, you do need, you do technically need an amp in there that can, you know, has variable volume control. That's the sort of thing that is, that is handled by an amplifier. Um, you need it to take a, a sound signal and make it, you know, very loud, very quiet, somewhere in between. Um, so yeah, technically you need an amp. But I think to your point, you're probably really just asking me, do you need to have something like um, one of these amps over here, my shit stack or my drop THX AAA one, or do you even need like an external uh, DAC amp on your phone? And in my opinion, no, no, 
you, I mean, there's a good argument you don't need any of these for anything. Uh, certainly not for most of the gear in my, my collection, but if you're just looking, if you're just concerned about getting really good sound quality and making sure you have plenty of power, if you're listening on IEMs, honestly, an Apple dongle, a Meizu dongle, that's perfectly fine. Like you're not missing out on anything except a volume knob. And knobs, so that's where we get into like the, the, the real reason why I like amplifiers is I like having knobs. Same reason why I like having these little players, I like having buttons. Do you need a little player like this? Can you just listen on your phone? Yeah, just listen on your phone. It'll sound great. Do you want buttons? You gotta get a DAT. Rob Hawk asking, have I tried it on the tracks? And then you posted a train. I don't, I'm not sure what that means. I have not been on a train in a long time, if that's what you're asking. And I don't think you are. Maras again, how's it going? Nice to see you. Transient Snail, it's 4 a.m. Are you up early or up late? That would be, I would be more likely to be up early at 4 a.m. than up late at 4 a.m. these days. Maybe like 15 years ago, up 4 a.m. was not an unheard of time to go to bed. Um, but I can't stay up that late anymore. In fact, last night, I probably stayed up till midnight. I don't know if you can tell, my eyes are probably a little bit red. No? I don't know. Midnight is late for me. PJ, glad you can make it. Glad you can make it to one of my live streams. It's good to see you. And My Life Matter is telling me that you think the company is actually pronounced Yidu. The X is a Chinese character. I will, you know, I believe you, um, but I'm probably not going to remember that. Yidu, interesting. Omar's asking, have I tried high-end apps like the DX300? And if I have, can I notice a difference? Or would you say that it's just not worth playing that much for a DAP? So I have tried um, for a little bit some more expensive DAPs. The DX300 is actually one that Precog, uh, Precog Vision, another reviewer, was over with a couple of weeks ago, about a week ago. Um, so I tried that for a little bit. I've also listened to things like the Sony NW the W1A, WM, I, I forget what collection of letters and, and numbers Sony went with on that one, but it's like, you know, a thousand dollar plus digital audio player. And I gotta say, like, I, I, I didn't hear anything that really stood out, but um, I was also listening to other people's music libraries because they weren't my daps, right? So I, I wasn't living with them. I didn't have my music libraries on them. I wasn't listening to familiar stuff. And that makes it pretty hard, honestly, to make that kind of evaluation. But I guess I didn't hear anything on them that made me feel like I needed to go out and spend $1,000 plus for a digital audio player. That said, I'm not opposed to spending $1,000 for a DAP, but it would have to be, it would be more for like the physical characteristics of it and like the input and the UI and less so about what it sounds like because again to my ear most things most digital outputs just kind of sound either good or bad and anything in between is really like or anything past good is really like nitpicking transient snail asking any other small dap recommendations i mean um this so this is the Cow and Plenty D2, I believe they have a D3 out now. This is a pretty nice little small DAP. This is probably, so there's also the, let's see, the Hibby, not the Hibby. There, there's the Hibby R3, which I haven't used, but I have used. Let me see if I can pull out some of my other small DAPs. All right, let's do a quick small DAP rundown. Uh, da, 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 where is, where is, there we go. There we go. So most of these are gonna be out of batteries and I'm not gonna be able to show you much about the UI, but let's make room for these things. Okay, some other small daps that I've got, right? 
So here is the X-Duo. Most of these are not gonna be as small as the X-Duo. This thing is tiny. The SanDisk is a little bit tinier, but most of these are gonna be a little bit larger. Um, this is a small DAP that I think is actually worth checking out. It's only 35 bucks. This is the Zshin Z3, and I'll warn you, this thing has a bunch of really weird quirks, much quirkier than this thing. Like, I had complaints about the UI in this. This is much worse. But for some reason here, it's just like, maybe because it's so cheap, it's 35 bucks, and maybe just because it's so bad, it's like kind of charming. This is a fun little player, and it sounds great. Um, I've got, this is the Fio M6. I, this is Android based actually, which is kind of cool, gives it some flexibility, but it's just not really fast enough to do Android things and not be annoying. So I don't think I would recommend this. Uh, this is a Sony NWA1, or no, 45. I mostly use the A105, uh, but the 45 here is actually still a really solid player. And there is the 55, which is a newer version of it. They don't all come with Yaxi earpad stickers on them, unfortunately, but a really good player. Um, I don't have any complaints about this. This thing's just really good. I guess the only complaint is that it's got this WM port on the bottom, for which I have an adapter to turn it into a, well, micro USB, which is not that exciting either. And then the last small player that I'll bring up, and I don't, again, I don't think I have power in this thing. This is the Fio M3 Pro. And, you know, the UI on this thing is not the best. It's kind of laggy, but there's something about the form factor on this thing that I quite like. And especially when I strap it to this Zshan U1 uh, amplifier, totally unnecessary, but it gives me a volume knob tons of power and for some reason like it just looks like a bomb so i actually really like this little stack um yeah i would say like if i were just buying one for myself i would still get the sony though just because the ui on it is pretty solid and dntr so i asked you if the deal breakers i mentioned were uh, deal breakers for you because you said you were interested in your answer is in your opinion, a software update is more than necessary. I like the form factor, but that's a clunky UI if I've ever seen one. So hopefully XDuo, I'm gonna make this offer, honestly. If you're out there making a digital audio player and you want feedback on your UI before you release it, I would love to help somebody make a really good UI for a digital audio player. It doesn't have to be Android, doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, one of my favorite digital device UIs is the Ricoh GR camera. It's like a, a little small point and shoot camera. It's just got a really nice, quick, snappy, simple UI. It's not fancy, but it's, it, it does the trick and it's a joy to use. Uh, we can make that happen. Reach out. Abilash saying thanks. Uh, I bought the, high, the Tin Hi-Fi T2 Plus and Sony NW. A55 after my advice. Hey, and then I just recommended the A55 again. So at least I'm consistent, huh? Demetrio, you're late, but that's cool. Thanks for joining anyway. In the Pines asking for the best amp DAC for PC car, by PC and car portable listening? I don't. I, I don't know. Big Boss said the Cutelix, so that was this little, where did it go? This little device right here. This is a pretty solid little thing. Um, it has Bluetooth in it. You can use this as a DAC amp. You can connect it via USB-C directly to your computer and use it as a, as a hardwire, not, you know, not a Bluetooth DAC amp. Uh, but then the thing that I actually use it for is that it has built-in parametric equalizer, which is just really powerful. EQ software. Not that I'm a big EQ user myself. If I was, I would probably use this device even way more than I do. Um, but for, for testing purposes, basically, for me, it's useful to have a parametric EQ. And Muhammad asking, so Apple dongle is enough for most IMs. Lots of reviews say it is good. What's my opinion on Apple dongle? I agree, the Apple dongle is also good, or I will also say that. In fact, I've got one sitting right here on my microphone that I use for making measurements because it measures uh, it measures flat, which is kind of what you want out of a, a DAC amp. Uh, and it's simple and it's cheap. And if it breaks, you're down nine bucks, get a new one. D 
David K saying Shanling makes great daps. There's the M0, which is tiny. Yep. The Q1, which is the perfect small size. And then there's the bigger M2X. Yeah. So there are some other small daps that I don't have here on this table. The Shanling M0 being one, it's like super small. It's like a, a little square. There's the file M5, which is about the same size. Those ones, I haven't used the file, the M5, but I have used the Shanling M0. I, I think that it's too small, if I'm being perfectly honest. I prefer something with the form factor of this, which is probably actually a little bit bigger than the Shanling, but the Shanling just has a, a touchscreen UI. And I don't, I didn't love it. I would rather have physical buttons. As much as this can be clunky and kind of slow by browsing uh, really long lists, I prefer this UI to a touchscreen UI on a really small device. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the M0. I know it sounds great and like a lot of people love it. So uh, just that's my opinion is, is I don't love the, the UI on that thing. But yeah. Pimpin' Pens saying, hi, thanks for the video. I'm gonna pick up a, an X Duo now. All right, there you go. Uh, Big Boss saying, wow, you didn't realize the NWA45 had such an adapter. Yeah, this is a thing, I don't, I'm pretty sure they didn't sell this in the US, but eBay's awesome, so you can find these things. You just look up uh, WM port to micro USB adapter. In fact, is there a model number on the back of this thing? The WMP NWM10. Right, let me get that to show up on screen just for posterity. There you go. PJ saying it looks like a vape, not a bomb though. Okay. Talking about this one. That's actually one of the reasons I like these little kind of confusing little players. I think this thing looks like a vape or something like that. It looks like an e-cigarette or something. And this looks like, a, I think, a bomb, but you say this one looks like a vape. Man, I'm, I should be doing that. This is, this is the family show. Also, I don't know how to use vape. <laughs> Sean, how's it going? Welcome to the chat. NWA105 and A45, baby. I agree, both very good. My Life Matters saying looks like a BTR5 killer. I assume you're referring to the Cutelix, which yes, the, the Cutelix here is a competitor to something like the File uh, BTR5. I haven't used the BTR5. I think I would probably like the buttons on the BTR5 better. I hate the buttons on this thing. I, they look the same. Uh, I don't know what they do. They don't make any sense. I'm sure if I use this thing more often, I would figure it out, but I hate the buttons on this thing. Everything else about it is pretty solid though. Big Boss saying you tried both the BTR and the Cutelix and you returned the BTR5 last October. Now it's even more feature packed referring to the Cutelix than it was before. That's one of the thing, things that's pretty cool about the, this little thing is that the, the, the makers of it are very active on their own forums in responding to community feedback and upgrading the firmware of this thing uh, with new features and, and just new settings that people are asking for. Super Snake Man asking, does the Apple dongle have any issues with Android devices? So yes and no, actually. So obviously to start with, you're gonna wanna get the USB-C version of it. There's a lightning version that came with iPhones, but they also, Apple released a USB-C version because now their new iPads only have USB-C. So you'll wanna start with that and that'll plug directly into your Android device and it should work, but you might run into a pretty common issue in that the a lot of apps I, I don't I'm gonna use some language I don't, I don't really understand how this stuff works but a lot of apps are not capable of getting all of the output power from the Apple dongle so your your maximum volume for an IM will probably be plenty high but if you're listening to a headphone even something like a Porta Pro or something might it might not quite get loud enough in some music apps there are how there are however that was that sentence I meant to say there are, however, um, some apps that can access the entirety of the Apple dongle's power. 
Um, and basically they're just music apps that ask to, ask to access the Apple dongle directly. So I haven't found any streaming apps that do that. So if you're listening to like Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, um, Tidal, I don't think those apps will be able to get full power out of the Apple dongle. If you're using an app like Sony Music Center or um, UAPP, I believe is what it's called, uh, those are some other common uh, music apps on Android. Those will, once you plug in the Apple dongle, they will request to access it and then they can, they can get full volume out of it. So for me, I, when I'm using Android, my main uh, music app is the Sony Music Center. Um, so for me, the, the Apple dongle is totally fine. If you're concerned about that, however, you could just get the Meizu dongle, which costs more, but it does look cooler. Iantron saying Sansa Stark clip. Game, Game of Thrones references, huh? BBQ Ninja asking, is the Walkman still my daily driver? And it's gotten complicated. Not that complicated, not that complicated. Mostly I bounce between two DAPs. Still the Sony NWA105, and then also the Hibby R5S that I reviewed a couple of months ago. They're both roughly, they're both pretty similar units, right? They're small Android devices, and I like both of them quite a bit. Um, basically what I do is I just, I leave one on the charger and I use the other one. And when the battery's dead, I switch. And that's kind of how I use those two. Vitor Machado saying, still have the Sansa Clip Plus. Oh, and that reminds me of NWAV guy. Is that um, a community member that, yeah, I think I'm familiar with that story a bit. Sean asking, I'm um, late to the party. Have you tried any Cowans? If so, any good? Their UI looks sexy. So let me actually come over here real quick. And yes, the answer is yes. I've got two different Cowan players. This one, the battery is dead, so I'm not gonna be able to show you. This one I think does still have some battery juice. This is the Plenu D2, and this is the Plenu R2. The UI on them is, is basically the same, although um, the, the processor that's here in the R2 is significantly better. Um, this is not gonna show you much because I have no music stored in this thing, but I think the layout on this UI is, is pretty decent. It's not as intuitive as the Sony's, but it's pretty decent. The, the thing that I wanted to show you, and I'm not gonna, because I don't have any music on here. I can't generate a list of any sort. Um, but the, the scrolling on it is just not that great. Like the, the screen, the refresh rate, maybe we can find a different screen to demonstrate it, maybe, maybe. I don't think so. Um, yeah, basically the refresh rate on these things is not great. And it's, I would say it's decent here on the R2 um, and it's actually bad on the D2. That said, I was able to live with it. Like, and again, compared to most other dApps of its size, I still preferred its UI, but it's pretty sluggish. Big Boss with the ultimate troll, saying Cal and Plenty R2 and D2. Hmm, I bet they're Star Trek fans. That sounds like a joke I would make. Um, but yeah, folks, that's gonna do it for this video. Again, if you found this video helpful, useful, or you just had fun talking, uh, please hit the like button, helps me out, helps the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already, but I think you are. And um, I guess I'll see you in the next super review. Have a good one.